So I've previously discussed MAGA world infighting on this show before, and there's certainly divisions that exist, uh, but I feel like it's not as prevalent. Like Chud infighting is not as common as some people want you to believe, but there are definitely irreconcilable differences that exist and they're only growing stronger. And that was really crystallized after I read an article from none other than Ann Coulter. Yes, that Ann Coulter, who is a far right extremist. She is genuinely a crazy unhinged individual, but as crazy as she may be, as much as I disagree with her, she is a very principled person. And when I say person, I mean fascist. So she is essentially now a giant anti-Trump Republican. Now, she started off as a Trump cultist herself. To an extent, she published a book titled In Trump We Trust with the subtitle E Pluribus Awesome, which is just so unbearably cringeworthy that it makes me feel pain. But regardless, you know, she kind of helped to boost Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, she turned on Donald Trump. And this is because she is a principled fascist and she just doesn't feel as if Trump was as fascistic as he promised he would be. So now she is an anti-Trump Republican. And because she doesn't like Donald Trump, well, she has the capacity to actually be a little bit more objective than her Republican peers. Or if not objective, at least spitefully arrive at the correct conclusion, perhaps for the wrong reasons. But either way... She penned an article about Dinesh D'Souza's new propaganda documentary about the 2020 election titled 2000 Mules. And in this documentary, he supposedly provides us with definitive proof that Donald Trump was robbed. And he bases this on two claims. The first claim is that he has cell phone tracking data that suggests that Democrats were stuffing ballots. And the second claim is based off of an argument which is extremely stupid and flawed now ann coulter is going to take both of these claims after watching the film address them and absolutely shred them now i don't know if she's doing this for the wrong reasons i don't know if she's doing this because you know there's some bad blood there between her and dinesh d'souza because believe it or not i actually found out that they used to date maybe she's a scorned lover i'm not really sure but either way what she says here makes sense so i'm not going to give her credit for being right and just having basic common sense but what i will give her credit for is actually speaking out and condemning the people in trump world who she believes are grifting off of donald trump's fame which is a common phenomenon so she writes first the movie doesn't show what it says it shows cell phone tracking isn't precise enough to distinguish between liberal activists stuffing drop boxes and store owners police officers delivery men and others who have perfectly legitimate reasons to be within a few yards of the same drop box every day in all five battleground states D'Souza considers it is perfectly legal for third parties to drop off ballots for others with varying degrees of lenience pennsylvania for example allows a grand parent, grandchild, uncle, aunt, niece, nephew, in-law, household member, caregiver, or jailer to drop off someone else's ballot. Even if every cell phone dot represented a left-wing organizer illegally dropping off another person's ballot, that still wouldn't make the ballot invalid. A legal ballot can be illegally delivered, although the guy who delivered it might be in trouble. These flaws have already been well aired elsewhere. So understand that she's taking the core claim in this film the core evidence that the election was stolen, and she is easily, flawlessly dismantling it. And with a lot of these conspiracies, it's not that tough to dismantle it. You just have to think about it for a little bit, be somewhat intellectually curious, and you'll arrive at that conclusion if you have enough brain cells to rub together. And apparently Ann Coulter was able to put two and two together here. And she's right. D'Souza's claims, it, like I haven't seen the documentary, but if he's trying to use cell phone tracking data as evidence, just right off the bat, it, it's so bereft of any validity that even using it should discredit you just overall. And this is someone who's a hack. Like he's made so many documentaries before uh, about how the Democrats are evil and they're commies and they're demons, but it's always based off of conjecture, hyperbole, 
and fear-mongering. And he's doing the same thing here. So he's a one-trick pony. And really what's funny about this story is he is really frustrated that other propagandists haven't been promoting his conspiracy documentary. I believe he even called out Tucker Carlson for not bringing him on the show so we can talk about this film. But what he doesn't realize is that, you know, networks like Fox News uh, Newsmax and whatnot, they've been dealing with lawsuits as a result of their lies because they are demonstrably false. So why would they jeopardize themselves legally just so you can promote your grifty film? It, it's just hilarious. So I love that the grifters are kind of turning on each other. So she also addresses this claim that it's impossible effectively for Trump to lose, according to Dinesh D'Souza, because just everyone loves him. She writes, the second problem, my problem with the movie, is the idea that Trump's 2020 loss cries out for an explanation. We know for a fact that Trump was wildly popular, sailing to a landslide election on the love of a grateful nation. Only something nefarious could explain his defeat. Hello, Trump lost only one demographic in 2020 compared to 2016. What was that demographic? Answer, white men. How did liberal activists pull off that? In the five states where D'Souza deploys his hocus-pocus cell phone data, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, Trump lost 8% of white voters compared to 2016. He lost 12% of white men. That's according to Trump's own pollster, the highly respected Tony Fabrizio, as well as everyone else who's looked at the 2020 election data. It was also predicted by anyone who supported Trump in 2016 and then watched him piss away his presidency for four years by betraying his base. I mean, you really have to be living in a bubble to think that because you like Trump, and because a lot of people like Trump, it's impossible for him to lose. I mean, contextualize the 2020 election. I assumed that Trump would win as well, but then COVID happened and then he mishandled it. And, you know, then Biden got lucky, essentially, and, and came to power. It was also an anti-Trump election. Uh, but I mean, like these election claims are so obviously fraudulent and hacky because there's been more than 100 GOP primary winners who pretend as if the election was stolen. One of them just won a position as the Secretary of State of Nevada and claimed that he wouldn't have certified the election back in 2020. But now that these people have won, they're they're saying, oh, well, yeah, we won and we're happy about that. Wait, hang on a second. That's, that's the end of the story. You claim these elections were fraudulent, but yet you were able to successfully run a campaign and win. And then you're just, that's it. We accept that. Explain why your election wasn't fraudulent. Did you win by like a greater margin than than you could have? Like you can't just say these elections are rigged and then when you fucking win, you're like, oh, I guess they're not rigged anymore. No, that's not okay. If you're going to say the election was stolen, it is incumbent on you to provide us with evidence. And nobody has been able to do that. Dozens of court cases have been thrown out. So the fact that Dinesh D'Souza is getting dismantled by other right-wingers is hilarious. Now, before liberals like Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel end up bringing on Ann Coulter and trying to rehabilitate her image because she's attacking Dinesh D'Souza and Donald Trump, Please don't do that because, again, this is an individual who is a fascist. She is mad that Trump didn't do as much fascism as he promised he would do. She's mad that he didn't build the wall. She's mad that a month after getting elected, he met with dreamers and said one nice thing about them. I mean, don't you know you're supposed to fucking treat them like animals, Trump? So that's why she's mad about him. So, you know, regardless of why she's mad or how she came to this conclusion. Maybe she contrarianed herself <laughs> into the correct position on accident. I genuinely don't know. All I know is that I hate Ann Coulter, but if she is going to uh, actually accurately criticize these people who are trying to grift off of Donald Trump, I think that's important. Now, to be clear, she is mad at people who are making money off of Donald Trump. She's mad that Trump himself is ripping off his own uh, base. She says that she's enjoying the January 6th hearings only because she likes being proven right about how Trump was a douchebag, even though she worshipped him at first. Uh, but she claims that there was no criminality on Trump's part, which is absurd to me because he tried to stay in office after he lost power, which is unconstitutional. But regardless, she says that she does believe that there may be criminality there with regard to his election fraud fund, which didn't actually go to the court fees as the January 6th uh, select committee is is proving. So look, I will link you to the full article down below if you want to read this, but don't. Don't give Ann Coulter clicks. I went through the best parts and whatever you do, do not subscribe to her Substack. I feel like that should go without saying. She herself is a grifter, but she's accidentally correct here. She arrived at the right conclusion in this instance, but that doesn't mean that she's a good person.
she's still a bad person and we have to make sure that we don't rehabilitate bad actors just because they utter the words Trump bad, right? So in my opinion, this is an interesting story because I like to see infighting on the right. There's a lot of leftist infighting, but you know, I think that the right wing infighting is really important. So whenever there's a story about Dan Crenshaw, an idiot himself criticizing Marjorie Taylor Greene for being the bigger imbecile, I like that. I love to see it. So uh, my response, as it usually is, is let them fight. And those of us on the left will just grab the popcorn and watch. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.